Welcome to the Trey Carter Show. Guys, we are making a crazy video today. On this channel, we actually talk exclusively, exclusively, <sighs> speaking English is hard. We speak exclusively about investing, stock investing, and uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, looks like we are transitioning to and adding to this show, talking about Bitcoin investing. Yeah, I can't believe I just said that. Uh, <laughs> 2016, 2017, when a Bitcoin literally popped up on my radar, uh, it seemed it seemed like funny money to me. And honestly, right up until about five days ago, it still seemed about like funny money to me. Just like anything you don't understand in life, it's very easy to understand why somebody generally stays away from that. But there was something that happened about five days ago that really jumped out and uh, captured my attention. Now keep in mind guys, this, is, this video is not intended to make you run out and go buy Bitcoin or anything about this channel is about financial advice because I'm not a financial advisor, but I will tell you this. This is about my financial journey. Four years ago, if I could go back, I wish I would have started this channel because I could have watched my train of thought and actually recorded and documented my lessons I've learned through actually investing in the market through, for example, owning Tesla for the last four years. It's been um, it's been a wild ride. <laughs> and uh, if, if you love Tesla videos or you're curious about Bitcoin, you kind of want to watch the evolution of uh, this channel, guys. Do not forget to subscribe below because we do uh, live streams regards opening the market, sometimes closing the market. We're going to talk about earnings calls, really anything about investing and growing your wealth. We're going to be talking about this channel. But there was a guy, there was, there is a guy by the name of Michael Saylor that really, really caught my attention. And it's like any type of uh, something that can get in your system. It's spread like absolute wildfire. And it caused me to go in this big rabbit hole of what Bitcoin is, what the purpose of Bitcoin, what the value proposition of Bitcoin is, and is it something that I should be really putting my money into? And I'll tell you what, I was really surprised about what I found. And I actually have a fun video I want to react to with you guys because it kind of gives a bit of a decent framework, right? Just like the game of telephone. If I tell you what somebody told me, it's going to be distorted to a degree. So I found a good video that's pretty short that we can go through, react to it with you. And uh, I'm very curious to see what you guys think. Bitcoin is, is an infinitely hard asset, whereas gold can be produced by human beings given enough incentive. I realized that over the long term, um, Bitcoin is the harder asset than gold. Bitcoin and gold. Why not gold, Michael? I considered gold and then I started studying the two and then I realized that gold miners are going to produce about 2% more gold every year. And then I realized that, that uh, there's a possibility over the next 100 years that more than 2% of gold be increased. But let's just say in the best of- Just to give some context, where he's talking about the potential of there being more than 2% in the future is when you think about space travel, for example, and if they find an asteroid, something of that nature, they can mine gold or other products, uh, other metals, precious metals off of that, or find a, another reserve uh, that is just overly abundant, right? Like, um, like, for example, with where oil was, and then technology was invented that has allowed for fracking and how the United States has just overly and abundantly produced oil and how it drastically affects the price, right? When, when I, for example, invest, my investment strategy is anything five to 10 years out. And really, any investment you make that's going to be, going to be successful, it could be defined in the technology industry. Every industry right now is affected by technology, right? But what I'm looking for is anything that is five to 10x potential returns, for example, which is why we're so heavily invested in Tesla. And with this, Michael, Michael Saylor's approach is that he's talking about wealth preservation and you're going to get a little bit more of an insight here soon with why his company has put millions of dollars into Bitcoin because it's protection against inflation or uh, hyperinflation of assets depending upon how you want to view that because with this stimulus that we have coming out, it's it's the meme, right? The burr, the, the Fed is just pumping money into the system and this is a... Uh, he paints a picture for a potential good hedge against inflation. 
for gold, that means $100 million will be debased down to $12.5 million in 100 years. On the other hand, Bitcoin is, is exponentially going to infinity stock to flow. There's never going to be more than 21 million Bitcoin. So you're really talking about at most diluting $100 million of Bitcoin by 10 million over the 100 years. And given, given the fact that Bitcoin is, is an infinitely hard asset, whereas gold can be produced by human beings, give it enough incentive. I realized that over the long term, um, Bitcoin is the harder asset than gold. Do you think we'll see a shift because we see central banks buying gold, right? And that was a signal I would say at the start of this year and last year when there was record uh, buying from central banks. Uh, could we see that happening with Bitcoin? I think that uh, Bitcoin is digital gold, and that means it's faster. I can I can move it a thousand places in a couple of seconds. It's stronger. I can pledge a hundred million dollars of it for three hours in Japan on a Saturday afternoon, right? It's smarter. I can write a computer program that'll slice it in a million pieces and do complicated things with it. It's only going to get better every year forever because it's software. And what that means is people that are that are attracted to Apple and Amazon, Google and Facebook, because they're smarter, faster, stronger networks, they're going to be attracted to Bitcoin. Logically, that means by the central banks weren't buying Apple, Amazon, Facebook and Google initially. It'll first be technology investors. Then it will be super high net worth individuals. It'll be private companies public companies it'll be the institutions that bought apple stock eventually warren buffett bought apple stock but he bought it 10 years after i bought it so if it and this is part of where it caught my attention is that currently right now there are institutional investors institutional money large sums of money beginning to flow into bitcoin and it's been slowly trickling and flowing in and as people are looking at stimulus and over the next uh, listening to the fed they pretty much assured that they're not going to increase interest rates until past 2024 right so you have four years of them literally guaranteeing that interest rates are going to stay where they're at which means that when you have people with large sums of cash on their balance sheet they have to put it somewhere otherwise each year the value of their dollar or what they could purchase with that or invest with that goes down and down and down and right now bitcoin is one of the best investments when it comes to preserving wealth there's a lot of ways you can view bitcoin some people try to view bitcoin as in like it's a, a taking over currency like it's what we're going to use instead of the dollar in my mind and how it's kind of been evolved and i'm assuming uh i'm assuming it's going to continue to evolve that it's a it's a store of value it's it is my way of hedging against inflation of the US dollar and potential, uh, not potential, it is investing in what I believe is the future, which is everything becoming digitized. Outside of the short term uh, with inflation, uh, the degree of what how the US is responding uh, by pumping more stimulus and how central banks across the world are all printing more. Um, long term, this bet is definitely about it being a digitized world and everything flowing in that direction and bitcoin being the primary biggest one but this is the very interesting point is that institutional investors and that money flowing into it cash app allowing you to purchase sell and trade and send bitcoin paypal coming in and doing the same thing as well the only goofy about paypal is that paypal will not let you send your bitcoin to a different wallet what a big fan of that one Though Cash App does allow you to do that, which is the big company Square. And um, it's really interesting. Really, 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 really super interesting. Then, and then you read about central banks today buying the NASDAQ today, right? But five years ago, central banks wouldn't have bought NASDAQ stock. So maybe they'll get there, but they, it's going to be a natural adoption cycle with waves of other investors taking the asset position first. You've also said, Michael, that your the Bitcoin reserve holdings could be li liquidated at any time, even on any given Saturday, for example. That's been misinterpreted. Yeah. What I mean is that Bitcoin is the best security and the most liquid security invented in the history of the world. Okay. There's never been a security 
not a, you can't liquid you can't convert dollars into yen on Saturday afternoon you gotcha. can't sell gold on Saturday afternoon you can't sell Apple Amazon Facebook or government debt on Saturday afternoon with Bitcoin you can get a bid on it in any currency any hour of the day 365 days a year which means you can market to market at all times we've never in the history of the world had a liquid security that you could mark the market everywhere on earth every minute of the day no holidays and that's what makes it an extraordinarily pristine asset michael i know that uh folks like you know, and pundits like Max Kaiser and Raul Pal uh, uh, very much share your vision and your vision of Bitcoin. And they have very bullish uh, calls on, on Bitcoin. I mean, Raul Pal, the last one I saw was, you know, it could go to a million. Uh, what kind of forecast do you hold? Steve and Dave use eToro to trade cryptocurrencies. Steve does extend. You know, I, I believe that the, the price of Bitcoin and the value of Bitcoin is going to go up as more people adopt it as their treasury reserve asset, as the technical. For me guys, when I hear, I don't wanna say crazy, because it makes me think about how people called Kathy Woods crazy a couple of years ago for thinking Tesla's uh, stock price could go up to $3,000 or 7,000 or even higher than that. This is pre-split and they've already hit those markers and it's not even 2021 yet. But when I hear markers like a uh, million dollars per Bitcoin, my brain isn't my brain isn't so much connected with that, and that's like not the not the goal because it seems very gimmicky at that point. But Bitcoin's entire uh, entire basis really what drives the price is the is the demand portion. As long as there's demand for Bitcoin, it's going to increasingly go higher. Now there's a whole another aspect of Bitcoin in regards to personal freedoms that uh, the government cannot come in and just take your assets from you, or it's a protection against uh, a variety of things of over tyrannical government potentially doing that, which is a whole different uh, conversation in regards to Bitcoin. But when it comes to everything that's going on currently right now in the short term with the pumping of money and uh, with these quote price predictions, as you have more of this institutional money uh, starting to go into Bitcoin, especially when you have some of the larger head funds head fund uh, traders are gonna come into it as well, um, you will see a drastic jump in price, just like in anything, when there's not a high supply, but you have a high demand, it forces that price to go higher in a very uh, quick jump in motion up. Utility increases, as the productivity of all the people that adopt it goes up, they'll sweep their cash flows into it. And then as the inflation rates of all the fiat currencies it trades in increases, and, and I'm talking about asset inflation rates, like the 10% a year, I'm not talking about CPI inflation rates. Those four drivers are going to drive it up. At what rate? I can't, I'm not a trader. I don't really res, you know, respect traders, to tell you the truth. Like I'm not in the market to buy it this week, sell it next week and buy it back the next week. I'm more in the Warren Buffett school of thought, which is you buy it because you expect to hold it right. forever and it will go up over time. I just don't know at what rate and to what level, except obviously it's extraordinarily valuable. Now you hold 73% of your company's uh, voting shares, but I still want to know when you showed up on whatever day that was with this, with, with your, with your new um, strat strategy here, uh, what was the reaction like? I think, our, are you speaking about uh, the company? Okay, our employees. Yes, they're very excited because they think it's a very progressive move. People are, our company's full of technology lovers, and Bitcoin is digital gold. It's a, it's it's the dematerialization of gold in the same way that Apple dematerialized your camera and Facebook dematerialized your photos and Google dematerialized your library. It's really cool to be on the edge of the virtual wave where you're doing something that's going to be a million times better than what came before it. And Michael, finally, you know, as the CEO uh, of a huge company, um, you know, Moving into Bitcoin, obviously there's a fear of the value of the U.S. dollar, of what will happen to the currency, what will happen to our economy. How do you see things? I think that um, inflation is a vector. And that means that there are some assets like YouTube views and, and manufacturable goods that are not 
uh, that are very abundant and they're not going to inflate very fast. I think that they're going to be uh, scarcer assets that will inflate faster. And I think the pure financial instruments and assets will inflate even faster than that. As we produce more money, I think we'll have a range of inflation rates from 0% to 25%. Wow. I think that, for example, bonds have been inflating at 20% a year for a decade. You could have spent a million dollars on a bond in 2010 that paid you 50,000 a year in interest. This year, you would pay $10 million yeah. for the same bond. It's a 22% inflation rate. I think that we're going to see those sort of products continue to inflate. I think that eventually there'll be consequences and there'll be changes in behavior. How That's where really my brain jumped on and I started doing so much research in regards to uh, reading a couple different articles or spending uh, an amount of time on YouTube uh, listening to different people and their viewpoints about Bitcoin, whether they are for and then uh, trying to wrap my mind around it as in why I should avoid Bitcoin. Um, it's definitely something early on that I did not understand. And even right now, I feel like I at least have my hand on it to where I can at least somewhat have a conversation about it and wrap my mind around it. But it's like my understanding of basketball. Basketball is a sport I do not watch. I don't want to say I don't enjoy watching, but I just don't watch it. I don't follow it. I can tell you the rules. I can tell you some of the major players in there, but I'm by no means an expert. And this is somewhere that I've just started looking and researching in. And hopefully by me making this video, it would encourage you to do the same. And a lot of my research strategy and how I do is I look for support of something. And then once I've kind of reached at a point that if I'm, the, I'm on the same page, I start to look at the counter arguments, right? I start to see like what's out there that could... Uh, uh, make me believe that doing something else would be better or not doing that thing would be wise. And where I've arrived here is that I'm going to, and I have put money into Bitcoin and I'm going to continue to invest and put it into there. And here's ultimately where my brain is wrapped around. It's like where I was with Tesla. Tesla is a company that I have so much conviction and belief in that I'm willing to lose thousands and potentially tens of thousands of dollars because I know that if my thesis comes correct, that I'm looking at hundreds of thousands, potentially a couple million, paying me back on that investment. And with Bitcoin, I'm probably not gonna go to the degree of what I went in with Tesla, but it's definitely something that my brain uh, has a hold on. I don't fully understand, but if I'm looking for taking money, uh, risk, and emotion aside, I know that there is something here because I do believe our world's increasingly moving in a more digitized way that this has to be something. I know it will be something. I know five years from now, 10 years from now, my gut tells me that looking at $26,000 per Bitcoin is gonna be super cheap. So for me, it's put a couple thousand dollars, maybe even more, and that's relative to what's expensive for people, guys. So that's a lot for you. For some people, that's like pennies and nickels. But putting that out there and willing to lose a couple thousand, that because it, then it could turn around if my thesis is potentially correct, if my gut's correct, Bitcoin could be like $100,000 per coin that I make a couple thousand or ten th tens of thousands. Or if some of these other people end up being correct and it's a million dollar per coin, even cut that in half, you know, it's an investment that I'll be glad that I got in because this is stored value for me. And I'm very excited to document my journey, guys, as I, as I continue to research and get involved more. Here's the thing, guys. If you guys are big Bitcoin co uh, components, Please leave some information down below in the comments in regards to good people, good resources, because I'm trying to expand my mind and my knowledge in regards to investing, especially in regards to Bitcoin or any real cryptocurrency stuff. But leave a comment below, guys. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you guys like this video or you guys like anything Bitcoin, Tesla, investing related, don't forget to subscribe below because that's exactly what you will get with this channel. Until the next one, guys. Peace.